Okay, so are we still there? Awake or we are long gone? Okay, yes. cool. So uh, first of all, you might be still more fascinated about who I am. I'm wearing a turban and you haven't seen me around. Okay, that's okay. And maybe you can reach out to me and you can ask about my turban. I won't, I won't, uh, it won't hurt me. So that's okay. And uh, I'm really proud of it. So that's, that's me. Uh, but yeah, uh, nonetheless, why I'm here and what I'm going to talk about, I'll consider it more of a lightning talk, not a full fledged talk, but still, if you have questions around, I'll be there and we can talk more about it. So let's start with it. And first of all, who am I? And I'm a full stack developer working primarily with React and React Native both. So for my work style, uh, that's my company uh, where I'm working currently. This is an aviation based company. It's a joint venture for Lufthansa Technique and LG Electronics. It's based out of Hamburg. Uh, so that's one thing. Next, uh, this is a community. I'll be, I'm more uh, active in this. It's a, it's a side job along with Gluestack as well as an open source uh, community there. So this community which I'm talking about, it's an uh, Indian based uh, JavaScript community which we are running in uh, almost five cities now and we are expanding the operations in Europe soon. We already started in London and soon we are looking for something in Berlin and Hamburg. So that's another thing. Uh, that's my close. Okay. Can you hear me? Am I audible this way? Perfect. Can I drop the mic? Don't drop the mic. Don't drop the mic? Okay. <laughs> okay. So I don't know. I am more comfortable without the mic, but yeah, it's okay. So that's my, uh, uh, what I say, the social handle. You can scan it and we can connect it anywhere possible if you're willing to do that. But if not, that's also fine. Okay. So let's talk about uh, what are the universal apps? And you might have seen the banner here, which is from the glue stack itself. And you wonder why and what is this? But let's first talk about a bit of a background and then we'll see what glue stack gives and provides you in this current new era for the React Native, which was built for the React Native first approach. And it went on for the universal thing. So we are talking about web. We are talking about Android, we are talking about iOS. So we can build multi-platform apps with this universal component library. So just consider it to be not the framework, but a library to help you uh, scale your product in different uh, fragments or I would say different uh, paradigms, for example. So what's, what's the uh, problems and uh, rulings around it, we'll also explore these today. So first is why speed and efficiency matter? Can, can anyone of you uh, tell me about it? If you're building a production-based application, why speed and efficiency matter for you? Does it really matter or doesn't it matter? If your client is upon your head and it requires an application to be built in one month, does that make sense? Does that sound a bell in your ears that, yeah, you need an app and client is sitting at the other end. He's talking about like, I want the delivery as quickly as possible. What will you do? And mind that you want the delivery in all platforms, all platforms, right? So let's talk about it. Okay, the first is shipping faster, right? You always believe we have so many resources. Why the product is not being shipped faster? Because underlying frameworks doesn't make that possible, right? So if the frameworks are not that compatible, they are not allowing us, what we can do? We can do smarter work, right? Let's see. Then second comes is the frequency. How frequently we can update our builds. We have seen ES builds. We have seen different procedures for React Native, how we can do that. But still it takes time, right? But in some ways we can help make it more frequently. We'll see it later. Next is consistent experience. These days, multiple frameworks are there, multiple libraries are there, and we always struggle to adapt these together 
and make a consistent experience across all the platforms. Web, mobile, mobile also has two, iOS and Android, right? So let's see the next part, the traditional development challenges, what it could be. So first is code bases, always. We have an Android native app, we have an iOS native app, and then there's a separate website, which is running along the way. And we have different resources to manage all of them separately. Does it make help? So question to hybrid heroes, since it's, you are a good company and then you're running it for a long time, does it help you having separate code bases? Anyone? It helps you? No. I guess, okay, cool. Okay, we'll see how, how Gluestack could help you as well in the future. But yeah, second, code duplication and debugging. Then you have one simple feature which has to be duplicated in all three platforms and then you will write same code again and again. We always talk about uh, modularization and we always talk about components in React, right? But we never exercise it. We never, we never say that why should we do it? when we have an entire page in one single file, why do we separate it? Why do we make atoms out of it? We never do it, unless and until it is a requirement. What requirement? Performance. When performance sits on the top of us and then it is required for us to make it more modular, make it more componentized, and then we try to make the app more uh, runnable in that factor. But nonetheless, we'll see. Next is the inconsistent design and the platform quirks. As I mentioned before, we have multiple platforms and multiple platforms bring multiple frameworks. So underlying platform also gives you problem on the way. It is not as convenient as it could be. So you never know where you can stuck in the future and whatever help you need, could you get there? But now in the next point is the developer pain points. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, when we decide as a company that we are going to do this framework, everyone forgets about the developer. Why? Because they just see the use case, they just see how the use case is compatible with the framework and not what that platform is giving to the developer. So these pain points are always the bottom line of every framework. Uh, context switching, first one because now you have uh, multiple native builds and then you have to do a context switching between them. Just example, uh, React and React Native. I don't know how many of you have worked with React here. Anyone? React? Guys, wake up, wake up. Okay, React are there. Okay, so I don't know how comfortable you are working with uh, React in parallel to React Native. Can you give me a number between uh, one to five? Four, okay, anyone else? Is there anyone with a five? Five like uh, most compatible, you can work simultaneously between the two platforms. Yeah, no, no? Yeah, that's the problem. Because they are at the code line, they are still the same. But they provide us still different, different API builds and different API uh, documentations. And then we cannot work them parallelly because there are multiple paradigms which have to be looked forward because we are working on different platforms altogether. Right, so second is the mental fatigue. Now, uh, the next day your manager comes and tells you that, guys, this thing is not working. This is not as efficient as it should be. Then it's a more mental stress that how you can, and then you start scrolling through the documentations, videos and YouTube, everything you scroll all day and then you find nothing. But it still stays there. And the styling, I don't know. Uh, just a quick question again, uh, being front-end developers, when we talk about React Native, React, Web, Android, iOS, all of you whom you're sitting here, how many of you would like to work primarily with CSS? Like write down everything, height, weight, perfect, perfect. That's not the case in all the scenarios. I heard many that they don't like CSS at all. Like it it's gives them uh, jerks, it gives them nightmares working with CSS. And we love Tailwind, if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. You love Tailwind, right? 
because Tailwind gives you more access. So I'll tell you why I talked about Tailwind later on. But yeah, and obviously the cross-platform native UX. That's the, that's the hard journey for each and every designer in the world. Like when you have built for the web, why didn't you build for the tablet or the mobile? Oh man, I forgot about it. Why did you forgot about it? We have a component library which has to be supported for all of them. But at the end of the day, it's a nightmare for a designer to build three parallel designs for one such thing. How can we help them ease this operation? Okay, so that's the introduction. Uh, that's the charm I'm gonna present you. It's uh, GlueStack UI. This QR code will take you to the GitHub of it and then you can explore what and why this component library, the universal component library can help you build three cross-platform uh, applications with just one set of components and the workarounds. But moving on, let's have a quick look at a video which could explain how things Okay, ready? Okay, I hope this waked you up. Good to, okay, perfect. Okay, now the next thing is we talk about how GlueStack helps you solving the problems which we discussed in the previous slides. And the first one, the unified components, as I've been saying it in all the slides, iOS, Android, web. So, hey, are they? Next, Tailwind, as it's, it's a, it's a, it's a very good charm for all the non-CSS developers, like, and that's the glue stack already having everything. So it gives you the tailwind-like effect to use your CSS classes in the exact safe format as you were using in the tailwind, which I don't remember we have it currently, but here you are. Reusable styling logic, which gives you the consistent design across all platforms. And next comes is the copy pasteable components, the block system, which we all like a lot. I don't know how many of you have started doing it, but that's the future, which I look forward to, that every and each and everything which will become as a block and will present you in the near future. But that was my last slide, but moving before that, I'd like to give you a bit of a demo, if that's not a problem, we are still on time, okay. Uh, okay, man, 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 it's always complicated with working with two screens. Okay, let's see a dive demo. Okay, so we're gonna see a quick live demo. Uh, how many of you have your Expo Go on the mobile devices? Would you like to try? Let's go. So this is a dashboard application. You can find it on the GlueStack uh, website itself under the app section. So these are the demo applications which have been uh, going on there and then you can try it out yourself. 
And here is the, I'll do a zoom in. You can scan this QR code and this will take you to the Expo Go application with a demo for a dashboard application. Let me know when you're all done. I think I have, don't have to show you a demo, you can do it yourself. Perfect. And then we quickly see how the effect of the various breakpoints will help us integrate the same components on different screens. Right now you see whatever on Expo Go is the mobile version for it. What do you expect it to be on the tablet? So that's primarily our tablet. And if we go even further, that might be our desktop mode. So that's how powerful the Gluestack UI could be if you try it out and give it a go. It's similar to the other libraries, but it's a one-stop solution for all your problems and the faster delivery of any production-based application. Okay, and in the same way, we have different other applications which could help you understand how this is an effective library, but yeah, that's primarily the end of my talk and let me go back. My mouse is gone. Okay, so that was it. Again, the link tree QR code for my social credentials. Questions time. Thank you, Akash. Thank you.